Hi, welcome to today's episode of In the Kitchen, Keeping It Real. I'm your host, Ariel, and today we're going to be making the first thing that comes to my mind when somebody says to me a classic Italian dish, spaghetti and meatballs. But actually, because we're filming and because it's also chronic illness friendly, we're going to make capellini and meatballs. One of the saddest things about going gluten-free is the loss of pasta. I'm going to say it. It's true. It's a true story. However, I have tried every pasta brand on the market. True story. And no one is paying me, although they should, and I'm going to contact you if you don't think I'm not. This is the best brand on the market. But there is a key when you're making gluten-free pasta, and that's what I'm going to show you now. Anytime you've eaten gluten-free pasta, it's probably got that gummy, weird, mush-mush, nobody loves it. In fact, everybody's like, oh, she's telling me this tastes just like pasta, but it actually doesn't. There's a special trick when you're making gluten-free pasta. I'm going to show you everything I know. So let's head over to the stove. We've got a pasta pot on, a boiling, rolling water. Generously salt this puppy, okay? You want this pasta water to be like the frickin' ocean. Sprinkle your fingers and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I know, you guys are like, really? Really? You salted it that much? Really. The super magic duper key with gluten-free pasta is whatever the package says, it's wrong. It's a lie. You ignore it. If the package says it's 11 minutes, you're going to minimally, minimally subtract three. I don't like the way spaghetti and meatballs look. Um, I think it kind of looks like a big red mass of brains. So I'm going to show you a special fancy way to plate your spaghetti and meatballs that will really impress even your gluten-eating, pasta-eating friends. And everybody's going to say, forget about it. Oh my God, what is this about? The, 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 the balls. Click the link above to watch the meatball episode. Don't want to lose out on any flavorful meats. Um, a nice tip for you, when you're chopping your herbs and you want to move them, don't use your blade side. That will make your blade dull. Use the back side. So you're chop, 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 and I know you want to do that, but don't. Chop, 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 flip, swoop. At three minutes, I want to try it. Al dente. Al dente PS in Italian, to the teeth. To the pain. Anybody? Princess Bride? You guys know it? To the pain? My brother could do that whole entire monologue. I think he probably still can. So it's too dente, but I really want to keep a close eye on it because... I don't want it to go too far. You let it go too far, it tastes like mush mush, your known is gonna be saying, Marona mia, what are you doing? Where's my pasta? Okay, I've got some arrabbiata pasta sauce warmed. My pasta's all drained off. I gave her a quick run with some cold water so that she stops cooking. And right into there, I'm just gonna mix in my parsley so that it's nice and green that we see those green flecks when I show you my special trick. And because I've got some, I had some blanched kale earlier, just to add a little bit more of a veggie kick. So how I do it is I grab some pasta and I make it into one, like, like a rope. And then I start making spirals around the bowl. <laughs> The man dude is in for a serious treat. Spaghetti and meatballs, classic, classic dish, gluten-free. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of In the Kitchen, Keeping It Real. I'm your host, Arielle. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Leave me a comment. Let me know what your number one Italian classic dish is. Find me on Facebook or Pinterest and share this dish with all your loved ones. I really, really dare you to have your nonna try it and tell me that it doesn't pass the test. See you next Wednesday. Ciao.